My name's Lisa, I'm from Kingsford in Sydney and I'm now currently 33 years old. My partner and I, we both work at the airport. We'd been there for a couple of years before we'd even, even seen each other or, or heard of each other. I remember saying to someone, I want to meet this guy that's like this and like this and like ticking all these boxes and I'm not even joking you a week later, I met my partner who ticked every single one of those boxes. Within six months, we'd moved in together. Within about five weeks, it was Father's Day. I actually did a pregnancy test and I walked out of the bathroom and I said to him, Happy Father's Day. Thankfully, my local GP did a pap smear um, and it came back irregular. So that sort of was a bit of a trigger. And this is now 17 weeks pregnant. We went into the oncology ward at the Royal and um, I had my biopsy and it was a little bit unclear the reading. It was over Christmas time. So they said, look, we need to kind of get you back in as soon as possible. I got the call and they said, oh, if you can come in tomorrow, um, bring your partner and, and we'll have a chat. You're going to see Professor Hacker. I saw Lisa when she was about 18 weeks pregnant and she had a very large cancer on the cervix. Um, I strongly recommended to her that we should treat the cancer immediately. We were told that we could terminate the pregnancy the next day and I would have a radical hysterectomy or I could continue the pregnancy and follow through with treatment, which we decided to do. We went for the second option, which was to give us some chemotherapy, uh, hope to shrink the tumour. We chose to fight and we were like, <laughs> we were like, we are not, we are not having a radical hysterectomy tomorrow because this is my only chance to have a baby. So my tumour was five centimetres in size and if the tumour did not respond to the chemo, then I'd be having um, our baby at 24 weeks. So they were going to give me four weeks to see how the cancer responded. When I went in to have that, that initial checkup to see how the cancer had responded, it had actually shrunk by 30%. So we were like, oh, this is amazing. It kept responding, so it was, I was able to continue the pregnancy. So it kept responding, kept responding. And then at that 30-week checkup, when Professor Hacker did my kind of internal to make sure everything was still okay, he was just amazed because the tumour had miraculously disappeared. So it had gone. Um, at 34 weeks, five days, we had her, so we knew it was a little girl. And um, yeah, she came out like happy and healthy and crying and we were prepared for none of that. Like we thought there would be no tears or there'd be complications, but she was just perfect. And so then I went in to have a radical hysterectomy, which was about a seven hour process. And then I finally seen her from memory and from photos that I can remember that night that I got to hold her for the first time. So Edie is five now, five and a half. If it wasn't for her and I wasn't pregnant, then I probably would not have had that pap smear in it. I always say it could have gone underlying, so who knows how much longer. Everyone has a mother, everyone has an auntie, everyone may have a wife or a sister or a daughter. There is so many women in people's lives that can be affected by this. So, I mean, early detection, you know, the funds that are raised for early detection is just number one. You know, if, if cancer is stopped in the early days, then people may have a chance. Please donate for others so other children can have their mummies just like me. Mwah!